Father, what precious words that you would give us your son. You would give us your son. You would send him to this earth to die in place of wretched sinners. Lord, he would ascend to heaven and he is coming back to rule and reign on this earth. I pray as we remember your son now, you would grant us your grace that we would do it well. We would do it according to your word. And I pray it in Christ's name. Amen. Well, this is the point in our service where we take some time to remember Jesus around his table. It's a time for Christians to remember Christ and what he has done for them at the cross. Uh, In a few moments, we're going to be taking a small wafer and a bit of juice. And these are symbols of the body and the blood of Christ that was shed for us. Uh, To help us remember Jesus rightly today, we're going to be looking at a passage that examines the humanity of Christ and why that is so important for the Christian. So let's turn in our Bibles to Hebrews chapter 2. We're going to look at verses 14 through 17 together. Uh, Some men are going to be coming down the aisles. If you don't have a Bible, simply raise your hand and they'll get one to you. Uh, If you don't actually own a Bible, we would love for you to keep this for yourself so that you can begin reading God's word for yourself. This is the section of Hebrews where the author is emphasizing the humanity of Christ. And he starts in verse 9 by explaining that Jesus was given a lower status than the angels, so that he might experience death for everyone. Then he explains that God used the suffering of the cross to perfect Christ. Now, it's not that there were any deficiencies in Jesus' character. There was no sin that needed to be overcome. Rather, the idea behind perfect here has to do with completeness, and that Jesus was going to add to his sinlessness and his righteousness and his holiness the experience on the cross where he would suffer in place of the sinner. In verse 12, the author quotes Psalm 22, which is foretelling the words of Jesus. I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the congregation, I will sing your praise. So the author is building the case that Jesus had to become a man. So let's read our passage to understand why that was. Starting in verse 14. Therefore, since the children share in flesh and blood, he himself likewise also partook of the same that through death he might render powerless him who had the power of death, that is the devil, and might free those who through fear of death were subject to slavery all their lives. For assuredly, he does not give help to angels, but he gives help to the descendant of Abraham. Therefore, he had to be made like his brethren in all things, so that he might become a merciful and a faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. We see in verse 14 that Jesus possessed the same human body that the rest of us do. He partook of the same flesh and blood. And this was necessary for Jesus to have this body because it was a requirement for death. In order to experience death, you have to have a body to experience that death with. And there are benefits from that. And we see two of them starting in verse 14 and continuing into verse 15. The first has to do with Satan and his power of death. Now, prior to salvation, the unbeliever is held captive by Satan to do his will. This makes the sinner unable to repent from their sin and unable to turn to Christ. The sinner remains in a spiritually dead condition, and permanent spiritual death is awaiting them. But after experiencing the cross, Jesus actively entered into death. He didn't succumb and give in to death. He actively entered into it. And he entered into death so he could conquer the death and he could conquer the sin that was the cause of that death. And Romans 6 tells us that his resurrection from the dead is what gives the believer the ability to walk in newness of life. So no longer is the sinner held captive by Satan. Instead, they have a new master. His name is Christ. And he is the one who frees them from Satan's power and enables them to live in newness of life. That's the first reason why it was important for Jesus to experience death. The second reason is in verse 15. And it has to do with the prospect of death that is looming over the sinner. Most people have some understanding for that for people who do bad things in life, after this life is over, some form of punishment or some form of judgment awaits them. But apart from what God has declared in Scripture, people really don't know whether they will be judged or whether they will be spared. And that's a problem, and that creates a great sense of fear, and people become enslaved to that fear. And this is what the author is getting at in verse 17. 
God's wrath against the sinner will be poured out, but if it isn't going to be poured out on the sinner, it must be poured out on a representative of that sinner. And this is where Jesus' death comes into view. Verse 17 describes Jesus as a faithful, as a merciful high priest. And there are two distinguishing characteristics of a priest and a high priest. And the first is their service. Their work is a work of service. Whenever they work, they're doing a service to others that are not qualified to perform that work. But the second thing is that their work is representative. They're working on behalf of others. They represent others. At the cross, Jesus represented those who acknowledge that they are a sinner and their sin makes them very needy of a savior. They have offended a holy God. They need a savior. And Jesus, because he's the son of God, is the only one who can save them from their sin and their penalty for their sin. And it's important that the sinner see Jesus as the son of God because only the son of God can satisfy the wrath of God that is due to the sinner. So this passage tells us that Jesus was faithful. This is the last thing I want to touch on this morning. This is so encouraging to the believer. He was faithful, not only his willingness to go to the cross and obey the Father in going to the cross, but he was faithful to remain on that cross the entire time his Father's wrath was poured out on him against everybody who would believe. And it was then and only then that Jesus could say, it is finished, after he had satisfied the Father's wrath. So believer, that is encouraging news for everyone here who knows Christ. So the Lord's table is for people who know Christ this way. They know him as their representative before God in God's system of justice. They know him as the one who took on himself God's wrath against them for the offense that their sin is against him. They recognize that they need Christ because Christ and Christ alone can satisfy God's wrath against them. If that is you today, I encourage you to join us together as we take the communion elements. When the elements come to you, take them and hold them and consider Christ this way. Consider that he is the faithful high priest. Consider that he went to a cross for you. Consider what that accomplished for you. And when your heart is ready, take the elements on your own. I want to be very clear this morning that communion, the Lord's table, is for people who see Christ that way. If you don't see Christ as the Son of God, as you don't submit your life to the Lordship of Christ over you, then you need to know that the Lord's table is not for you. We're so thankful that you're here because you get to hear the gospel. You get to see what it looks like for worship for believers. But what we want you to know is remembering Christ is for people who, for whom Christ died. So when the elements come to you, just pass them to the person next to you. But take this time to consider the claims of Christ, that he alone is the one who can save you. Your life will come to an end soon, whether it's this year or five decades from now, it will come to an end. And you will need a savior because you cannot satisfy God's wrath on your own. I'll be available after the service at the table in the front. The other elders are available or even the person in the row next to you. They would be happy to talk with you about knowing Christ as your Savior and Lord. So men come and serve us, and I'll come back in a few moments to close us in prayer.